Welcome back, viewers. This is uh, Betty here again with you, still on Health Talk. And as I said, we're talking about the path that ends HIV. Dr. Stephanie with me, and we are talking about uh, ARVs at this point. And you said just before you we went on the break that uh, ARVs are also used for preventive purposes. Mm -hmm. And I had asked you about vaginal rings. Now, this is very recent. Just a few months ago, the government launched these uh, HIV prevention measures and vaginal rings was one of them. And this was in the effort to bring this to a stop. And uh, when I heard about that report, what made me so uh, kind of scared was, isn't this what everyone is gonna go for? Because, mm -hmm. you know, people who don't wanna get pregnant mm -hmm. have pills to take and they have measures to take. Mm -hmm. I don't know if people who don't want to get cancer also have things to do, <laughs> but people are always on the preventive. Mm -hmm. And tell us about that, the ARVs for people who do not want to contact or catch HIV, mm -hmm. and the vaginal drinks, if those are really safety and preventive measures. Okay, uh, so the ARVs that we give, mm -hmm. that you give before, contact with you know HIV infection mm -hmm. is what we are saying as pre-exposure prophylaxis okay. now those ARVs that are given at that point it's not um, okay it's not a gateway ticket that is given to anyone so that you know as you engage you're safe that's mm -hmm. that's not really the, the okay. goal the idea is mm -hmm. you target particular high-risk populations mm -hmm. and make sure that they are not exposed um, at the point of like sexual activity or you know, contact with mm -hmm. with HIV infection. Mm -hmm. So that pre-exposure prophylaxis is aimed at particular populations to keep them mm -hmm. protected from. So that's why we said one of those populations is like the serodiscordant mm -hmm. couples. Mm -hmm. That's a population that you mm -hmm. know is actively at risk of acquiring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are also um, ways that you can use that for men who are living with HIV, who, who have a HIV positive partner mm -hmm. and men especially who sleep with other men, mm -hmm. there is also that provision for PrEP mm -hmm. given in particular mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. So, and then also there was that program that was used also for like um, sex workers as well mm -hmm. for prevention. So it's not a, a, a an end all be all ticket that you just use mm -hmm. this and uh, <laughs> and you keep yourself safe from. But from those HIV. who actually do are kept safe. Mm -hmm. Yes, those who do are kept safe. How do I not go to hospital and say I'm a sex worker and I need this prevention? You know, um, there are very many ways of again preventing mm -hmm. HIV that mm -hmm. should also be put into consideration. Okay. So that we don't just um, decide to just jump into prep. Mm -hmm. So. The the idea is there are, there are other measures that you can take mm -hmm. to reduce your risk. Okay. Using a condom, mm -hmm. being with one uninfected partner, mm -hmm. and that's what you are saying. Like at the start of mm -hmm. you know a relationship, it would be good to know your status before yeah. it goes mm -hmm. too far. So so things like that. Then I know, help. Doctor Stephanie, that never happens. I know. Yeah, who, most who, times, who mm, gets married or into a relationship and says. When I grow sense. up, yeah. Yeah? when I sleep mm -hmm. around, I want to contact HIV. No one does that. Yes. So it just finds you. Mm -hmm. It does. Mm -hmm. So and that's so the I'm better thinking. the reason you should mm -hmm. always stay protected. Yes. Uh huh. So that's why that's why I'm saying at that point where you're not at e actively seeking out mm -hmm. condoms are a dime a dozen and they are accessible, you know. <laughs> so things like that. So don't be so quick to run to medication. Mm -hmm. Because again, mm -hmm. we don't want to run the risk of uh, antiretroviral mm -hmm. resistance. Mm -hmm. And before you start PrEP, mm -hmm. you're not just given, you don't go to a pharmacy and you're given ARVs to prevent. Mm -hmm. You have to adhere to certain rules. Oh. So you will be tested mm -hmm. and confirmed negative. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you will also have to meet certain clinical criteria to show that you are not likely to have clinical infection. Mm -hmm. Then your risk... Um, profile is also taken and then you will do regular testing so it's not something that you're tested today your negative take you go off mm -hmm. you will test again after a few months test again like that. so it's not um that's why we're saying it's not an end-all be-all mm -hmm. because we wouldn't want to give mm -hmm. 
those regimens are different. Mm-hmm. If you think about ARVs, the way we are using it as a big term, antiretroviral mm-hmm. drugs, mm-hmm. there are many. It's like saying antibiotics. You know, oh. there are antibiotics for different things. So mm-hmm. the regimen for PrEP is not the regimen for like a, a, a is active sick. infection. So mm-hmm. you don't want to have someone who is infected mm-hmm. not being on the correct regimen. Oh. That is why you have to be sure they are negative and mm-hmm. you recheck mm-hmm. and you recheck. So when they they need to move to the newer regimen in the in the case of infection, they mm-hmm. check. So for the vaginal rings, mm-hmm. the idea is the same, that they have one of those antiretroviral drugs, mm-hmm. the ARVs, mm-hmm. attached to the ring, mm-hmm. and you wear the ring for 28 days, then oh you'll have to change it. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So Only when you're sexually active. When you're sexually active. Mm-hmm. And notice, because it's... Um, it's put as a vaginal ring, mm-hmm. then it only protects from vaginal sex mm-hmm. exposure. Mm-hmm. So that's another thing to consider. So you, you have it there, it produces a drug, it increases the concentration of this ARB within that area, mm-hmm. and it's been shown to reduce acquisition of um, mm-hmm. HIV infection mm-hmm. Yeah, in previous studies. So that's something that's been rolled out. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure it's commercially available yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... So you you know so sure that it's proven when it's really working. No, in terms of proven, yes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there's the studies that have been done. Yeah. So it's it's an intervention that is backed by WHO. Okay. But now for in this country is mm-hmm. what I'm saying. I don't know if it's like commercially available that it's something that you can get, let's say, from a hospital or pharmacy. Mm-hmm. As yet. The last mm-hmm. year's reports on HIV and how people are dying. Mm. Uh, puzzled me because I'm wondering whether the awareness is not really done well everywhere and if the government or whoever is doing this is finding any challenges or not, is not successful mm. in this search because uh, by now really, looking at the times that since HIV has been into the country or in Africa, mm. by now we ought to have curbed all these issues completely and even had all the solutions possible so that if you know that you were positive, then you are on the right ARVs, as you say. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, we, could, we should be having right now a lot of people with, uh, with the virus suppre- uh, sus- suppression, mm-hmm. as it is, having a higher percentage than the new infections. Mm-hmm. What do you think is uh, the challenge in getting into these levels because honestly the times that we have had HIV awareness Mm -hmm. in this globe or in this continent I think are so several. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What Um, has frustrated the process? So okay Um, I think we've made good progress but Mm -hmm. part of the things that are frustrating the process Mm -hmm. may also be the laxity that you are talking about. Mm -hmm. There's this idea that because we don't see AIDS the way we used to before, so it must have gone away, Mm -hmm. right? And Mm -hmm. so the disease, diseases don't go away, Mm -hmm. so it is still (laughs) present, so Mm -hmm. then you need to still be Mm -hmm. very vigilant as you are Mm -hmm. um, doing your activities. That's that's the one thing. Mm -hmm. And then we also notice that the, um, part, part of the things I would say, and maybe Maybe it's a recommendation that doesn't is not very popular, mm-hmm. but there's need for us to really do comprehensive sexual education. Mm-hmm. Think about the age bracket that we're seeing new infections are coming in. Mm-hmm. That's just the adolescent, pre-adult mm-hmm. age, right? Mm-hmm. So these are people between high school and start of campus to the end. Mm-hmm. And that's the age of experimentation. There's really nothing wrong because I understand mm-hmm. that you have a body that is evolving mm-hmm. and there is the curiosity towards yeah. sexual activity. And you cannot victimize growth. Yes. Mm-hmm. However, mm-hmm. it's instead of the approach of, you know, bury your head in the sand and nobody wants to talk about it. So even girls, when they get their first period, they're like, what was this? Nobody mm-hmm. tells you that your body is going to change and it's going to do this and it, this is what to, you know, so why do we have that heavy stigma? We don't talk about it. We don't mm-hmm. talk about reproductive matters. Mm-hmm. We don't talk about sex. Mm-hmm. So that, as, that again leaves people quite 
you know, blank on the things that they should do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because then if you know the things to do, Mm -hmm. you can take some measures. Mm -hmm. And you find that there's that disparity between even someone's level of education, where they grow up. So in a rural setting versus an urban setting, you can see differences in understanding of Mm -hmm. HIV prevention and Mm -hmm. what HIV is about, how it's transmitted. So I think we, it will be important that we are deliberate about sexual education Mm -hmm. and I'm not saying you know sit and you know do something crude or something very graphic Mm -hmm. that's not what we're saying Mm -hmm. because again this is a young population we're not trying to be graphic Mm -hmm. but just having clear conversations of when you want to engage in sexual activity be aware of this and you know it's not just physical health there are also emotional health concerns that come about it mental health concerns that come about it so we should just you know look away as young people are engaging because we don't talk about it you know stephanie yeah. um i remember not long ago mm. i saw a lot of vct tents and facilities in so many places i was almost like what everyone is talking about hiv what is so fashionable about hiv mm. but think about it i don't see that a lot nowadays mm. health talk is uh, is coming from uh a group or an organization called GNMV, Good News Medical Volunteers. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, part of this group went out on a medical camp, a free medical camp tour. And in part of uh, the Western Enyanza, there was a lot of people who really wanted to be tested. But guess what? One of the reports that I had from the, one of those who attended was that to be tested, it's not as it used to be, like you voluntarily go to the center mm-hmm. and just say, I would like to know my status. They have made it a little bit complicated, like uh, you have to give all those reasons why you want to be tested. And part of the reasons they give that they have to take you through that process is because they do not just have the kids to test you anyhow. So mm-hmm. they are now testing those who must be tested because the WHO is looking for some certain results like out of 10 people you got to get a positive otherwise you were testing the wrong people I don't know if Mm. that also frustrates the process or makes people uh, become reluctant or could it be the laxity you're talking about like uh, I don't see anyone looking sick so it is fine but that is one of the reports that I got from that team that had traveled to do that. So they were only going to test you if you really had good results to test. Previously, it was just, I need to know my status. Mm-hmm. You know, I am in the sexually active age, and it's good for me to know this. Mm-hmm. But now this time, they were saying that there are those strict measures. They need to know exactly why are you testing. Like the kids mm. are being misused. Have you heard anything like that? No, actually that surprises me because mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. that usually uh, you should not really be given a reason or be giving a reason why you want to be tested. Mm-hmm. Definitely we encourage people to know their status. Mm-hmm. You know, you should be able to walk in and be tested. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I haven't heard of that, and I, and I hope that's not the case, because mm-hmm. then we really, mm-hmm. you, that's how we want to achieve our targets. Let mm-hmm. at least, um, let 95% of people who have it know their mm-hmm. status, mm-hmm. so that that way, you know, when you know your status, then you know also as well what to do about it and mm-hmm. everything. So I think, I, I, I don't know about that, but I really hope that they're not discouraging testing. Mm. All right. Are there communities in uh, Kenya that you know have like the highest infection rates? Yeah, there were, there's definitely patterns that mm-hmm. uh, point towards, you know, higher rates of infection yeah. in like the Western region. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but usually, yeah, those are the areas that t- even now, because you can see the PrEP initiatives, like when Ministry of Health started with the vaginal rings, they mm-hmm. targeted now those particular areas because then mm-hmm. the, the burden of disease is higher there. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's the pattern that's been there for, for a while. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And for the patterns that mm-hmm. you have seen the rise, what exactly is the community 
uh, how is the community being guided mm. to come out of these figures or to change their statistics a little bit so mm. that uh, they're not always leading? What is it that, because people are just people. Mm. In that community, there are men and women. In the community where we have the lowest infection rates, we also have men and women. Mm. So what is it? Is it something to do with the environment that actually makes these figures rise or determine this pattern? Mm. Well, there could be. Okay, historically, yes, mm -hmm. there were particular patterns mm -hmm. of like um, sexual behavior that contributed to that. Mm -hmm. But I think now what we can do is definitely along the lines of what is actively being done, ensuring that people have access to this testing mm -hmm. and treatment. Mm -hmm. um, because now, I mean, in, even in terms of funding, they have very good funding. People don't have to purchase these drugs mm -hmm. nowadays. And so that, that increasing access and treatment come, get tested, get treated, get followed up, mm -hmm. that, is, that is how we can especially target those particular communities and show them. And especially as the pattern is changing, you can imagine if before it used to be like you'll find a whole village has been wiped out by the illness. But now mm -hmm. you find you have 50-year-olds, 60-year-olds, 70-year-olds who have the disease and they're living normal lives, they're working, they're doing whatever. It then changes the perspective so that it's not an illness that is a death sentence. Mm -hmm. So then that encourages more and more people, yeah, be tested, know your status, take medication, and when you take medication, you will live a normal life. You know, taking medication and living a normal life doesn't end the disease. It does not end it, yes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't end the disease. Mm -hmm. And there's also no guarantee that when you stop being sexually active, mm -hmm. then the disease also comes to an end. Mm -hmm. I don't know from your desk as a doctor, what exactly you would tell the viewers mm. would be the ways to just put an end to HIV and AIDS? Okay. I don't want to say put an end in that sense mm -hmm. because it is not... Hmm, how do I... How, how, how would I say this? Because this it's is not, a path. You know, this it's is not a curable path. like... Um, you know, like the way you can get a cold and if it's a bacterial infection, you take antibiotics and that's mm -hmm. it. And you don't have you, to take antibiotics for a long spell. You take for five, seven days mm -hmm. and you're okay. Mm -hmm. This doesn't have that pattern because of the ways in which HIV gets integrated into your cells and just the, the viral nature of the disease does not have, take, to quote unquote, a cure. Mm -hmm. But... When we say it does not have a cure, it does not mean that it will hinder anything. I don't know if you, I, I, I don't know which analogy I would use to, to explain that. It's like, um, I don't know, it's, it's like the way like, okay, let's say before mm -hmm. we used to have, you know, lightning can strike a building and, and burn things down and things like that. But mm -hmm. now we have the concept of lightning arresters and things you get. So mm -hmm. you're not really expecting that you would have a construction site and not put the necessary arrest to catch it. So that's what I'm saying. It's like um, we've put something in place that will make, put the disease under control. And once it's under control, then you can continue with the rest of your life. And the thing, what we can say end, when we say end like in this uh, AIDS targets, end means the more people who are on the disease and it is well managed, the fewer the new infections, the fewer the transmission, the fewer, you know, transmission to other people, transmission to children, mm -hmm. and then we increase life expectancy. So then mm -hmm. you'll see the disease becomes less and less and less of a burden. And that's what we would say is mm -hmm. an end. But there's, it's not an end as, um, in, in terms of eradication, actually, that is how things then end up being eradicated. Those small steps to make sure there are no new infections. If there are new infections, they are caught early and they are treated. And then, you know, so the path to end, that's, that's what it looks like. It's bringing the disease under good control and then making sure that even in terms of new infections and things, they are brought to a bare, bare minimum. And we can now begin to, to, to live with it, but under very good 
control. All right. Mm. We need to take yet another short break uh, before we come back to conclude. Mm. Uh, when we are getting into conclusion, viewer, we need to tell you about the right mindset to actually deal with this disease before you were infected and even after the infection so that we are dealing with this monster carefully. Coming back just now. <laughs> 